Another week, another preview. Dolphins Browns Week 10. Finally back in Miami after being in Detroit and Chicago for the past two weeks. Um, the three and five Cleveland Browns come down to the 305 to play the six and three Miami Dolphins. It's the final game before the bye, and it's it, it's a must-win game. Um, but the injury report is very optimistic. The only guy that's already been ruled out is Hunter Long, and only four guys on the questionable list. Teron Armstead, Teddy Bridgewater, Austin Jackson, and Tanner Connor. Hopefully, it shouldn't really matter if Teddy Bridgewater doesn't play. I don't think it will. Tanner Connor isn't much of a concern. Uh, uh, Teron Armstead, he's always on the questionable list. I'm very optimistic that he will play, and then, you know, the bye week is next week. You get all the rest you need before that tough stretch. Um, Austin Jackson, glad to see him back on the injury report at least. Um, he's questionable. Wouldn't really be surprised if he doesn't play tomorrow. In fact, I'm expecting him to not play tomorrow. Um, but it's great to see that he's at least questionable for this game. That basically proves that he'll be back after the bye week. Um, but like I said, it's a pretty big game. You gotta win this one. Go into the bye week on a four-game winning streak would be a very nice scenario, considering the three-game losing streak after the hot start. Um, going to the like I said, going to the bye on that hot streak would be great. You would have a record of seven and three. Then you played the Texans after the bye, eight and three, we'll say. Um, and that's the exact spot I thought the Dolphins would be in after the bye. Um, but then you have that really tough stretch. Niners, Chargers, Bills, Packers, Patriots in Foxborough, and then the Jets. So, the you know, these easy games are very important ones. Because if you don't win any of those tough games, um, you're at least in a playoff type of position. But obviously, you want to win some of those tough games. Um... But yeah, there's a lot of concerns I have for this game tomorrow. First of all, I'm glad they're back in Miami, but it's, you know, it's mid-October, so it won't be as hot as like September or October. But the main thing that concerns me is the rushing game for the Browns, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Nick Chubb is arguably the best running back in the NFL. Kareem Hunt is up there for a top 15 conversation. Um, a guy that was almost traded to Miami or had the, you know, it was rumored that that was a possibility is now potentially going to be feasting on the Miami run defense. But um, one thing that I'm a bit happy about is that I was really concerned about the Bears rushing uh, rushing offense against our rushing defense, um, mainly about Khalil Herbert and Dave Montgomery, but it ended up being Justin Fields who completely torched our defense. But the thing about the Browns is that you don't have to worry about that. Our good friend Jacoby Brissett, who was the quarterback for the Dolphins mainly last season with Tua being out, um, we know that he can't. He's not. He's not a very mobile quarterback. At least he's not as mobile as Justin Fields. So you got to get the pressure to him. I'm going to talk about that more in my keys to winning for the Dolphins. Um, but you don't have to worry about Jacoby Brissett running out of the pocket and juking a couple linebackers and going for a 30-yard run or something, just like Justin Fields did like 10 times last week. But um, you mainly have to put your rushing focus on Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Because um, they have a lot of different ways that they get them involved. Even in the passing game, they were mainly involved. They've been involved in their offense all season. Um, and Amari Cooper has had a pretty big impact on this team. Uh, the Browns don't have many injuries. I think Jeremiah Uwusu Koromoa, or yeah, Uwusu Koromoa, and David Njoku are the only two guys out for them. And I think Michael Dunn is like questionable for this game, but not too many injury concerns for them. Um, but tight end isn't something we have to worry about, obviously, with Najoku still being out. He was maybe going to be coming back this week, but obviously that's not going to happen. And Uwu Sukoromoa is a pretty big uh, linebacker for them, but I think that, that won't be too much of a concern. I want to see the Dolphins run this ball. I want to see Moster and Jeff Wilson get involved. Um, but the Browns' defense is no joke. Miles Garrett, first of all, on that pass rush, he's going to be on the side on Toron that the side Teron Armstead plays on. So that is a need him to play. Like I said before, I'm pretty optimistic that he will play because he's always on the questionable list and he always ends up playing. He's only missed one game this season and he has only practiced like one time this whole entire year. Um, he was like limited on Thursday. He didn't play on Wednesday or Friday, but I have a really good feeling that he will play. Um, and if he doesn't, I'm trying to think on who would start it because you've Greg, well, I guess you've Brandon Shell in the, right tackle spot, Robert Jones and left guard. Greg Little, 
would be the guy at left tackle. So that is a big time concern considering that he literally got benched for another backup at right tackle as Brandon Shell is obviously the guy at right tackle now um, with Austin Jackson still being out. And I don't even know if he's going to get his job back because Brandon Shell has not been doing a great job, but he's been doing an okay job. So you got to see what Austin Jackson can do when he comes back. But um, yeah, and then on the other side, obviously uh, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle are the best I'm going to say the best receiving duo in the NFL, but the Browns do have some playmakers at corner. Obviously, you got Denzel Ward, you got Greg Newsome, and Greedy Williams is the final guy. I couldn't remember his name. Um, and then obviously at safety, you got John Johnson, or Johnson the third. I know, I forgot what his first name is. And then Grant Delpit on the other side. They have a pretty, pretty nice secondary that has already solidified themselves as one of the best in the NFL. So that I am a bit afraid of. I think... I don't think we're going to see many deep passes. I don't think we're going to see the long game. But whatever is necessary to win this game, I'm down for. Um, you know, we also didn't think that we would see much of some deep passes in the long game. In the Ravens game, we know how that one went. So um, anything is possible. But I'm most likely uh, expecting to see a short passing game, getting the ball out quick, like I said, with Miles Garrett. And even Jadavion Clowney on the other side, they have a pretty nice pass rush, a pretty nice pass rush especially on the edges. Um, so like I said, I'm expecting to see a quick passing game and a lot of the run game too. Like I said, I want to see Jeff Wilson and Mostert get involved. Um, but for these five keys of success, number one is contain Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Like I said, I'm scared. I'm scared of them, especially against Miami's run defense, which has not shown a lot of optimism so far this season. Um, but if you can contain those guys... And, you know, the secondary does their job with Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, um, David Bell, and Michael Woods. Uh, but if the secondary can get can cover those guys and do a somewhat nice job on them, and the defense can c at least contain, I'm not asking you to stop them, at least contain um, Chubb and Kareem Hunt, I think the defense will do a good enough job assuming that the offense will do their job. Uh, number two Having to do with the defense again, get to Jacoby Brissett, please. Like I said, um, we have the experience, we have the PTSD of Jacoby Brissett being our quarterback and being a statue in the pocket. Um, if the pass rush can get to him, I think that a lot of good it, it'll it'll lead to a lot of good things. Um, he's not a mobile quarterback, and Bradley Chubb and Jalen and Jalen Phillips and even Sealer and Christian Wilkins multiple times. Even more than I can count with my fingers, um, the Dolphins got to Justin Fields. But he's just so good of a quarterback at escaping and getting around through the pocket that the Dolphins never brought him down. Only one sack all game from Melvin Ingram, I think. Um, but if they can get Jacob to Jacoby Brissett, I think that it'll lead to a lot of good things. Multiple sacks will uh, end up occurring this game, but it's going to be tough against that offensive line. Uh, Joel Batonio, Jack Conklin, Wyatt Teller, um, and Jedrick Wills. It's going to be really tough for that pass rush, but that that's exactly why the secondary is going to be heavily depended on for this game, which is where most of our injuries are. So it's going to be tough, even against this offense. Um, but yeah, and the number three, like I said before, get Mostert and Jeff Wilson involved. I've been saying all, all um, video. The Browns have one of the worst rushing defenses in the NFL. Even though their pass rush is great, the run defense is not too good. Um, so get them involved. Please, Jeff Wilson had a phenomenal game last week against the Bears. Um, I can tell he's going to do great things in Miami. Moster has been doing great things all season. The week before against the Lions, the Steelers, the uh, whatever. Jet, you know, the, the Jets, he had a great game. Um, I think that these guys can do very good things, especially if the pass offense isn't really going the way you want it to go. I think that we can expect the run to be always successful. Um, but for my score prediction, I do, th I do think that the Dolphins are going to win this game. I think they want to have a four-game winning streak going into the bye week. Being 7-3 and three would be great. Um, but it shows that even one of those wins against the Jets or the Vikings would put us in such a great spot. We're talking about a team that, with a win here, could be 8-2, and two, even with Tua being out for those three games. Then after the bye against the Texans, 9-2 and two potentially. So the, the, those teams definitely killed us, but I would definitely not hate a 7-3 and three record going into the season, going into the bye week, I mean. Um, but yeah, for my prediction, like I said, I think the Dolphins will win this game. I'm going to go 26-2. 
26 to 12. Um, it, it's not much of a reasoning. To, those are just kind of some numbers that I thought to mind. 26-12 is going to be my score prediction. Um, I don't think it's going to be four field goals for the Browns. I think that they will get into the end zone at some point, but I've always been so off with my score predictions that it doesn't even matter anymore what I come up with. Bottom line is I think the Dolphins will win this game. Glad to be back at the stadium. Glad to watch the Dolphins finally for the first time since Sunday night. Um, last time at Hard Rock Stadium, you didn't put up great uh, numbers. Only... 16 points from the offense you got to do way better especially with the with the fans depending on you we definitely got the two a chance going after he gets introduced um so if you're a dolphins fan going to that game make sure you're on board with that i'm not too sure if it's even a whiteout game it might be a whiteout game might not be i don't know either way glad to see the dolphins back at hard rock big game gotta win this game i think that they'll get it done though but that'll wrap up hope you guys enjoyed have a great day tua for mvp